Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Mary and here we talk all things houseplants with a bit more emphasis in Hoyas. Today is a very special day for me because I have my biggest Hoya haul ever. So I just came back last night from a trip to Singapore or as I want to call it the land of Hoyas because there are so many Hoya collectors there you cannot imagine. I have managed to find a um, relatively easy quite a few Hoyas that I had in my wish list for some of them for a very long time um, and I was super excited because some are quite rare as well so because I came back with 14 new Hoyas and I would like to show them all to you I think that uh, we should get started so the first one let me just grab it by the way all of these I have just put in water most of them to root because a lot of them are cuttings some others because they were in mediums that I don't personally use I have also put in water and I will try to develop some water roots so then I can transfer to pond all the Hoyas that I will be showing you today are either epiphytic or uh, lithophytes so all of them can do very well in pond without any issues first one is the Huskeliana with inner variegation you can see the plant here this is a native to Philippines actually it was first published in 1989 and there are different cultivars with either pink yellow or red flowers I'm not sure which one this is because the only tag I got from the supplier is Hoya Huskeliana variegata so I think that I will just wait for it to flower and then I will have more details the leaves are amazing i mean i had never seen the variegated version either the inner or the outer variegated before and i i now understand why people love this i mean on the front the leaves you can sorry let me remove this you can see the actual variegation but on the back the leaves are so nice you see here all the details it's a small lift hoya apparently as you can see uh, i'm not doing very well with small lift hoyas but hopefully this will grow okay i came to me in a mix of soil and sphagnum moss which is a bit strange because both of them retain too much water uh, so i just took it out of that it has some healthy roots not lots it had some root rot as well so this is why I will be keeping it in water for a while so it can develop some more roots and then transfer it to pond the next one is a um, full plant not a cutting and I am quite excited because I was looking for this for quite a while and I have managed to find it now so next one is Hoya undulata and you can see it here the leaves are quite thick actually they're much thicker than caudata I was expecting that it would be similar to caudata but this is not the case the leaves are much much thicker very cardboard like and you can see all the splashes as well on the leaves the back of the leaves is quite nice as well it has some red hue i'm not sure if it's visible in the camera so hoya undulare is native to borneo it was first published in 2015 and to be honest with you guys uh, all the um, uh, different plants that i could find so far were quite expensive so this is why i just had it on my wish list and it stayed there for quite a while now I managed to find this in a very competitive price, so just you know I just grabbed it. Um, it is an epiphyte or a lithophyte, okay, but it's supposed to be a very, very slow grower. 
uh, this is why when I saw a full plant I'm like okay I'm taking it I'm not getting just cuttings because I'm not sure how well they will do if I will manage to grow them also it's a Hoya which is not for beginners in general so if you are not very familiar with Hoyas or if you don't have any more finicky Hoyas let's say I would really not recommend it uh, this one as you can see it is in Spank Numos. this is exactly how I got the plant and to be honest because um, I have read that uh, we should not really touch the roots it's very prone to root rot I'm not sure if I will transfer it to Pon or not uh, we'll see depending on how it goes but it does have some new growth here so if I manage to keep this new growth and then it starts developing a little further I may take a cutting and then move it to water for it to grow some water roots remains to be seen so this one actually is a, a Myrmecophytic if I'm saying it properly Hoya makes makes Domasia so this is similar to Hoya imbricata in a sense so it makes room under the, the, the leaves for uh, different bugs like ants uh, to go and this is one of the ways it grows um, the name comes from the undulated leaves as you can see here the leaves are have this they are not they are not smooth whatsoever i'm sorry i cannot focus very well right now and in general from what i've heard read seen etc actually i think that miro from basic plants has a very good uh video about uh, undulata and if i remember he was the one who said that she really likes it warm like minimum of 20 degrees or something so i will try to keep her probably at the beginning until it you know gets acclimatized in my environment uh, probably in my heat pad now next one uh, next one is a Hoya <laughs> okay most of them as I told you I was looking for quite a while but the next one uh, okay I'm not sure how to introduce this because I'm, I got super excited when I found it um, I will say that I will start by saying that it, it is from Borneo it was first published in 2001 and there are two versions the long leaf and the um, shorter leaf, let's say and this one, the one I got, I believe it's the long leaf I mean I have never seen in person the short leaf so I'm not sure if this is the one but from the looks of it probably is the long leaf one and it is Hoya Clemensiorum and okay I'm, 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 I'm low-key, I don't know even how, how to describe it I'm low-key ecstatic about this thing like you can see the leaves you can see the venation and it is very thick the leaves are probably the thickest i have i have seen cannot cannot bend them whatsoever but guys i just want to show you the back of the leaves so i'm just turning this and can you see it's dark red burgundy almost black like besides the deep veination and uh, the amazing like the, the undulated leaves and everything else like the front is amazing the back of the leaves is also amazing I got this um, my supplier actually got all the Hoyas from just two suppliers told me that it came with this and with this I haven't yet checked for flat mites I have not done anything to them I have just put them in water so I will check a little bit later but I, I, I mean when I saw it I'm like I don't care if the leaves are not in the best shape I don't care about it I just want to get it and I hope that I will be able to grow it nicely uh, this is a Hoya that you get for the leaves 
the, I mean, okay, the flowers are similar to Finland Sony eyes. So if you like this kind of flowers, then okay, perfect. This is an added bonus. But the leaves of this Hoya are out of this world. Out of this world. Okay, so I will be keeping you informed about the progress of this one because it's probably my favorite one out of the whole batch. The next one though is a Hoya that I was looking also for a very long time. Uh, here in Hong Kong I could find it but it was super expensive and I was not willing to pay so much money for a plant that I may kill if I don't take care of it properly. Um, it is native to Borneo and it's not for everyone. I mean, I don't know, I, I, I do kind of love this kind of uh, leaves. It's Hoya Insularis. I'm not sure if the camera can catch these leaves. They are so nice. It was discovered quite um, a long time ago, I think 1908, uh, but it was named, I will actually, let me check my notes on that, so it was named Anatropanthus bornensis, so not even Hoya, it was very recently, actually in 2008, if I'm not mistaken, that, oh no, sorry, 2020, that it went under the Hoya genus, and... Uh, it, uh, they, they did extensive study, they did some DNA testing on the plant, so this is how it eventually ended up being uh, under the Hoya genus. Um, the leaves on this one can start some stress and they do, they go to a beautiful dark purple. Uh, the flowers for this look like, I don't know, I have seen people describe them like pink baby squid or something and to be honest I have seen the flowers online and I could say that they are quite like that uh, but I just love the leaves and this one is a quite long plant you see like it's it's quite big and um, this is for the transfer just for the transfer uh, the supplier has it in coco chunk and some charcoal inside I can see as well um, most probably I will transfer this to Pon as well to see how it grows. I hope it's not like my Retusa because the leaves is quite the, the leaf is quite similar to Retusa in a sense. So I hope I don't kill it by putting it in Pon in semi hydro. Um, I can now see that it is a bit underwatered because the leaves are a bit stressed here but we'll see hopefully i will not be having any issues with it i i'm not sure if it's considered the hard hoya to grow or not i never have had it i know it likes to dry out between waterings but this is the rule of thumb for most of the hoyas when you have them in organic mixes so no idea the next one is uh, actually the next two are gifts for from this supplier that got all these four plants and the um, First one is um, he tagged it as Hoya latifolia. So this is it. You see, it has a huge tendril, but anyway. So this is the Hoya. And actually, this is supposed to be the. Uh, he told me that, oh, you know, it's not Macrophylla, it's the original Hoya latifolia. By that, I'm not sure if he was referring to this as the Hoya dinner plate or the um, species Sarawak. I'm not sure I had none of these, I'm not very familiar with Latifolia. The leaf is, you can see, the size of it. It's not very large, so I don't think it's the dinner plate, but it's just one leaf, so you cannot really tell from just one leaf. I will let it to root a little bit more because now it has only like half root and it was in Sphancnum Moss, so I'm like, no, no, this is not happening, it's going to pawn. Uh, I will let it root for a while and I will see after it develops hopefully a few more leaves, how it develops and then apparently, okay, after it flowers I will be for sure able to identify. Um, the next one is another gift from the same supplier. 
and he tagged this oh by the way <laughs> it's a lacunosa and you know that I in generally me and lacunosas are not the best friends but okay I mean it is what it is it was a free gift I when he gave it to me I was like yeah okay I don't have this one and he described it as black margin uh, I have never seen lacunosa black margin uh, as a matter of fact Betsy Begonia in her channel has uh, some very nice simple for lacunosa she has I don't know, probably all the different uh, varieties of Lacunosa and I, when I checked um, to just double confirm whether the Lacunosa Black Margin exists I saw here Lacunosa Black and I'm thinking that this might be similar because the leaves, I'm just taking one out of the two cuttings it was just one cutting and but because it was too long I just chopped and made two so if you can see here the leaves, I'm not sure how visible they are, but they are, let me, here. They are very dark, not just the margin, they don't have black margin, they seem to be completely almost, almost black when I look at it. So I believe that this is the one, this is the Lacunosa Black as it's called, but I mean you can never, like every every supplier and every collector, whenever they have some Hoyas they might just name them however they want, so I just say it's Lacunosa Dark at this point, and depending on uh, the um, environment that I put it in I will see how it develops and if it's just you know green with a black margin or the leaves turn completely black or continue to turn completely black like this now um, the next batch they are all cuttings I got from a different uh, collector and uh, to be honest cuttings are much easier for me because in a sense that I prefer the cuttings to whole plants just because I really like to see them growing from scratch from like one node or two nodes cutting and you know see them developing in full plants and then flowering this is this is the most rewarding thing uh, I will be starting with another Yakunosa so this Lacunosa, uh, to be honest, I did not buy again. I'm, I'm, I would prefer not to buy Lacunosa because mm, there's a high chance I will kill them. Uh, this one was a trade actually. So I traded uh, my cuttings of my mini bell, and she was like, "Oh, you know, I have spare Lacunosa silver. I can give it to you." I'm like, "Okay, I have the normal Lacunosa. Now, okay, the black, whatever. Then I can just get the silver as well." So this is the Lacunosa silver. Let me bring it closer to the camera. I might also chop this in two as well from what I've been seeing here. So you see, I'm not sure how visible it is, but the leaves are indeed... Oh, I cannot focus, unfortunately. Hold on. Okay, here is better probably. So the leaves are quite silver, they don't have any splash, it's pure like silver leaves. Uh, I was expecting that it would be you know green with lots of silver splash or whatever, but no, the leaves are completely silvery. So this is actually a very very nice plant. The leaves are much smaller than my Lacunosa, my standard Lacunosa, but if you compare it to the black one, they are quite similar size so I'm not sure if mine is just a beast or this is the more normal and now with the Croniana and Lacunosa and all this for sure I can say that this is a Lacunosa because the shape of the leaves is completely different to Croniana I mean this is all okay to be honest I think both are the same but anyway all right enough with the Lacunosas and let me go to some a bit more interesting at least for me next one the macrophylla formerly known macrophylla now called latifolia because it's under the latifolia category outer variegated so this is it you can see the variegation and here as well and it already has started have some roots I mean I got it as a rooted cutting to be 
completely honest with you, if you see the leaves are paper thin, they are a bit sensitive. I believe that normally uh, macrophylla, I still call it macrophylla because Latifolia has like a thousand different um, Hoyas under it now, so I would prefer to keep the macrophylla, although I know it is Latifolia normally. Anyway, so uh, just for the sake of argument, this macrophylla, I'm not sure, I think from what I've seen for the normal one, I don't have it, but I have seen live the, the non-variegated version and the lips are a bit thicker. So I'm not sure if this will survive. It's a bonus that it already has some roots. I got it with uh, two roots already, very small ones, but still. So remains to be seen. I'm not sure also, I think that these uh, leaves are a bit smaller than the normal uh, latifolia or macrophylla leaves, but we'll see. The next one. Look, I, I just realized I got lots of native to Borneo Hoyas this time. Oh, anyway, so the next one is also a native to Borneo. Uh, first published in 2000 and it's Hoya Calistophylla. It is not rooted, so I can just take it out and just show it to you. And I know that so many people love Calistophylla. I love it as well. I love the venation. I, I love everything about it. I would expect the leaves to be bigger. It's the first time that I actually put my hands in one and I would expect the leaves to be bigger. They are not really hard. I mean, they are hard, but I would probably say that they're similar to Caudata in a sense. Um, I know it likes intermediate temperatures, so we'll see how that goes because now it's very hot here because it's summertime, so we will see. Uh, it likes high humidity though, have, in my, have this in mind, um, and not too much bright light, so I'll see where I will put it for the time being, for sure, probably not on my heat pad. Alright, the next one is a quite interesting Hoya because I could only find this species in Singapore. So, this is the cultivar Sungei Bulo. Let me bring it up for you, or actually I can just take it out. So, this is it. Uh, the color of it is quite light, almost yellowish and it has some interesting veination. To be honest, I'm not sure, it, it reminds me of Verticillata. I'm not sure if it's a Verticillata hybrid or if it eventually will be grouped under the Verticillata category. Uh, but I had seen the flowers that this one makes and they're amazing. They have little spots. Actually, Sungei Baloch means uh, bamboo river in Malay. So I'm not sure, and oh, and by the way, it's the uh, Singapore's largest remaining mangrove forest. Uh, I'm not sure if it's endemic to Singapore, I believe it is. This is why it is quite famous, let's say, there. And uh, actually, um, the supplier told me that, you know, oh, it's supposed to be rare everywhere else in the world, but here we have an abundance, like every collector has one. So. I, I am not sure about it, I don't know much, I tried to research a bit, I could not find much. It, to me it resembles a little bit to Verticillata, I'm not sure, it may be a completely different Hoya, I don't know. The next one, hmm, the next one is native to Papua New Guinea. Uh, it was published in 1995 and I just had to have it, because I already have the Archboldiana. This one is uh, relative to MacGilvrai. Mac, I have no idea how to pronounce this. I'm so sorry for that. Oh, okay, let me check my notes. Should be MacGilvrai or whatever. But anyway, the one I'm talking about is Hoya Onihoides. So let me just take it out. And this is it. 
the lips are nothing much they're dark green shiny i mean i personally love them i like them quite a lot i like that the central vein has a bit of a uh, yellowish and i actually like big lift hoyas this is one big lift hoya the amazing amazing thing with this hoya is the flowers the it's called on hoides actually this is a greek um, word coming from claw or uh, nails and uh, resembles like and the flowers resemble really resemble like claws this is why it's supposed to be a relative let's say with the mac uh, mcgillivray eye or however the other one is called um i really really like it i have seen somewhere that there is also a um, hybrid between archboldiana and donichoides i have both of them i don't have the third one um so i i really look forward for it to grow because i love my archboldiana it's one of my favorite hoyas at the moment and the new leaves are dark almost black and I, I don't know about this one hopefully I will not kill it and you know it will continue to grow the next one okay let me see which one we have next okay so we have one from Malaysia so this one I can just take it out because it's not rooted yet is the Hoya teddy bear or as it's officially called Hoya peninsularis so this one comes from the Perak region of Malaysia. I know that it likes it hot and very humid. So this one for sure goes on my heat pad. Now you can see, let me just take one out of the two. You can see the front side of the leaves. It has also some very nice veination. And the back is quite dark it has this red hue uh, the flowers on this one are very nice as well it has like a fuzzy corolla and a very smooth corona uh, this is one of the hoyas that also doesn't like to be overwatered. Um, we'll see i will probably put it in pond as well and we will see how this will go it's considered actually a difficult one to grow and it's very prone to root rot as well so i hope i will not kill it i have two cuttings at least one i hope that it will you know take off the next one also a wishless plan let me see if i can take it out it's also two cuttings and it's hoya piestolepis so Hoya Piestolepis is from New Guinea, uh, it was first published in 1913 and there are, I know there are three clones of Piestolepis, I'm not sure which one is mine, I quite like the leaves, uh, in all honesty I was expecting to like it a bit more, I mean from the photos I was seeing online I was expecting that you know when I see the leaves I would be like wow, I'm not but still it's just a cutting, I mean I do like the texture of the leaves, they are not really hard, they are I would say medium hardness and they are not exactly neither shiny nor fuzzy. I mean, the under leaf is a bit fuzzy. We will see. I'm I'm not holding my breath for this one, but maybe maybe it will grow on me. <laughs> Last but not least, for sure is a hoya that is a new species from Indonesia. Uh, the supplier, when I was discussing with her prior to my trip, told me that, oh, you need to get this one as well, it's brand new, I got it along with Paradisia before both of them were named. And I told her, oh, you know, I don't, I don't know, I don't have it in my wish list, so why bother? And she was like, no, no, I insist, you have to get this one. So, as it turns out, she was 100% right, because I'm gonna show it to you. It's species Java. This is the only thing that I have. 
Um, all right, just check the leaves. It has amazing big leaves, quite thick ones, glossy, with here one, yeah, just one of the leaves. One of the th leaves has also some like freckles, has some spotting, and it's just amazing. I love it, I love it. It has not a very deep veination. Actually, two leaves are quite different between each other. One has the spots, but not very deep veination, and the veins are not really prominent. The other leaf has much more prominent veins in terms of color, at least. So this is species Java. Uh, I'm not sure if it will eventually be uh, officially named, uh, but so far that's the only info I got. I have seen the flower, she showed me a photo. I will try to find it and link it as well and put it on the video. Uh, it's... it's quite nice it's quite nice and yes all in all this is it guys it's okay 14 new Hoyas that have will enter my collection after I do my standard process uh, I will treat them as usual as I normally do with all my Hoyas before they enter I will isolate for a while and then Fingers crossed, if all cuttings survive and they don't have any issues, I will then transfer it to most of them in pawn and just have them joining the rest of my Hoyas. So, this is it for today. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. That would help a lot. And I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.